Hello everyone, welcome to my royal family official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Following his interview on Newsnight, Prince Andrew reportedly had a brief six-word response. This scene is dramatized in the new Netflix film Scoop, which stars Gillian Anderson and Billy Piper. Prince Andrew intended to clear his name when he sat down with Emily Maitlis for the now-famous Newsnight interview. Nevertheless, after it aired, his life would never be the same. The 45-minute explosive conversation explored his association with convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein and went into considerable detail regarding the accusations of sexual assault, which he vehemently rejects. The Duke of York made a number of absurd claims under Maitlis's grilling, which sparked a great deal of public debate and laughter and sent shockwaves around the globe. Andrew was questioned specifically regarding Virginia Giffer, who claimed that when she was 17 years old, Epstein and British socialite Hislane Maxwell had instructed her to have sex with the prince in Epstein's residence in New York and other places. Giffer had claimed that Andrew was sweating heavily when she had supposedly met him in a club, but Andrew refuted this claim, claiming he is not biologically able to sweat. In addition, he informed Maitlis that he had never met the accuser because, on the night in question, he had attended a kid's party at the Pizza Express location in Woking. This information sparked an internet frenzy after the chat was made public. But after the catastrophic interview ended, the Duke had a succinct six-word answer. It seemed he had no notion that he would be compelled to resign from his royal duties and become permanently marginalized by the monarchy in almost no time at all. He seems to have been fairly correct in his appraisal of his performance in the interview, which is now being dramatized in the new Netflix film Scoop. According to an article in OK Magazine, Andrew said with confidence, I think that went really well. After the painful questions and answers had concluded, Photographer Mark Harrison, who was present to capture the now-famous interview in which King Charles' brother did everything but repair his reputation, provided the insight. It was said that Mark said, I was blown away by it, after witnessing Andrew stand up for himself. As the viewer would have been seeing it live, I think there were key moments that everybody knows about the sweating and Pizza Express all of these moments. Mark went on to say that caught the eye of the other cameraman on the other side just to kind of make contact with someone, but I just didn't want to do anything dramatic. The Duke thought the interview went well overall, he continued, but the Newsnight crew was anxious to begin with. They said, don't stop filming whatever you do, we will keep filming, and there is a chance that Prince Andrew may walk, we don't know what is going to happen, he said. Harrison said on Talk TV that during the interview, he was aghast at one particular time when Andrew claimed to have been eating at a Pizza Express the day he was accused of meeting Guffre. I was horrified. I guess I was as shocked as everyone else. But since everything was happening in real time, I had no idea what would happen next. At one point, I covered my mouth with my hand. Mark continued, saying of the restaurant claim, At the time, I thought that's a headline, and then, oh, that's a headline, appeared in another one. Five years later, I certainly had no idea that it would make headlines, yet here we are. Later, Jeffrey filed a civil lawsuit against Andrew, but it was eventually settled out of court. Prince Andrew made no acknowledgement of blame, guilt, or wrongdoing in the settlement. According to an expert, Meghan left the UK, and will never return since she could never be the face of the royal family. The Duchess of Sussex, according to renowned former royal writer for the son Charles Ray, doesn't want to interact with the UK. Meghan, according to the renowned reporter, didn't know how the royal family operated. Ray discussed Mexit and his time covering the firm in the late 1980s, early 1990s, and early 2000s on the son's royal exclusive program. I'm of the opinion that Meghan won't set foot in the UK ever again, he stated. She simply doesn't seem to want her involved in this country at all, in my opinion. Ray claimed that at first, he liked Meghan because she seemed content with Harry and she got along well with the crowds. He continued, 
If you saw her with Harry on some of those walkabouts that they did, and some of those early jobs before the wedding the people were throwing because the they were seeing the new young couple the new future for the monarchy. However, Ray claimed that after realizing she couldn't be the show's lead, Meghan was the one who decided to leave both Britain and the royal family. Meghan made the decision to not want to be on this road, he stated. I doubt that she was aware of the royal family's social hierarchy. You've got the monarch, you've got the, the, the Prince of Wales, and then you've got everyone else under that she wanted to be the star, and that I think it was that simple that she thought she'd just picked up her toys and decided to go off to America. The future king had lost someone who ought to be his closest ally, according to Ray, as a result of the break. They were really near. And for that reason, it saddens me greatly that they are now so separated. I always thought Harry would be one of William's closest advisers when he became king. I think that's out of the window. In response, Wilkinson stated that Harry ought to be William's wingman. Yes, and that's exactly what Diana always wanted, the boys to stay as close as possible to one another, and it was them against the outside world, but obviously that's not happening anymore, Ray remarked. Monarche FEUD. The Sun reported in 2018 that simmering tension started when William questioned Harry and Meghan's engagement's haste. Meghan was introduced to William while she was living at Kensington Palace, and this is apparently when the first signs of conflict appeared. Following her return to Canada, William and Harry had a conversation amongst brothers. He was aware that Harry was already smitten with her, but he allegedly told him to proceed cautiously. One royal source claimed that the younger prince went mental after receiving the council, which appears to have not gone over well. The Sussexes and Cambridges will split the royal foundation while they concentrate on their individual humanitarian endeavors. She doesn't seem to want her to be involved in this country at all, in my opinion. Charles Ray stated, The Royal Foundation was founded in 2009 by Prince William and Prince Harry, and Kate joined two years later, when after their engagement was revealed. The trio would frequently show up together at functions, and the foundation achieved great success with initiatives like the Heads Together campaign and the Invictus Games for wounded veterans. The Royal Foundation stated both couples will continue to collaborate in the future, but the decision was reached after a study of its structure was completed. Harry and Meg were residing near Kate and Wills on the Kensington Palace property when they moved to Frogmore Cottage in Windsor prior to the birth of Archie. The action intensified rumors of a backlash even further. In his Harry and Meghan, an African Journey ITV documentary, Harry 39, made hints about his growing distance from his brother. It happened after Prince Philip referred to Meghan as the Devu in reference to the American divorcee who persuaded Edward VII to abdicate, the Duchess of Windsor. According to a royal biographer, he also advised the late Queen to exercise cautiousness with Harry's future spouse. In her latest book, My Mother and I, Ingrid Seward disclosed that Prince Philip found Meghan's resemblance to the Duchess of Windsor to be uncanny. I don't think she was aware of the royal family's social hierarchy. Charles Ray stated, Harry and Meghan gave their shocking interview with Oprah Winfrey in 2021, during which Harry claimed that his father had financially cut him off. After that, Harry quickly returned to the UK to assist William in dedicating a statue to their mother, Princess Diana, on Kensington Palace grounds. However, rumors circulated that William refused to go to the memorial because of their ongoing disagreement. Before their grandmother the Queen passed away in 2022, rumors circulated that Kate was the peacemaker between the brothers. Harry said that his brother knocked him to the floor during a fight over Meghan last year. Harry said in his book Spare that William called Meghan difficult and rude after a dispute. William allegedly knocked me to the floor, ripped my necklace, and grabbed me by the collar, according to Harry. He claimed that after the 2019 fight in Nottingham Cottage, which is located on the grounds of Kensington Palace, where he was residing at the time, he was left with a noticeable injury to his back. Harry took a plane to be with Charles in January of this year 
following the unexpected cancer diagnosis of the king. The next day, Harry took a plane back to the United States without seeing Wills. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.